أهل الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك يا إله الكون قد أسلمت لك رب فاغفر ذلتي ما أحكمك أبتغيها مدحة طاغية تظهر البدر بليل الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن ولا وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها الأخوة الكرام وأخوات السيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear respected brothers and sisters, the ayat which were read to you, they contain some specific advice and led you to some particular characteristics which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the people who followed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the very beginning of this deen. These were the pieces of advice that prepared these people, that took these people from the dhulamat ila nur that took these people from the jahiliya ila al-islam they took them from su' ila al-khair that took them from being criminals to being muhsineen Over a period of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this advice, gave them these commandments. And put in their midst the best of the human beings. So if they wanted to know what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean by this or that? They only had to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an ayah, they never tried to figure it out on their own. As when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked one day, Mu'adh ibn al-Jabal was riding on the camel of the Prophet sallallahu very close to him. 
And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him, "Ya Mu'adh, hal tadri haq Allah ala al-ibad?" Oh Mu'adh, do you know what is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa taala upon His ibad, His servants? And Mu'adh is very close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he could have answered this question because he was a man of taqwa and iman. But his answer to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it was Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Because the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they were asked such a question, they never thought to themselves they could answer this question better than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they always returned it back to him to see what he would say. He told him. The haq of Allah upon His ibad, لا تشرك بالله شيعا, that they do not associate any partners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he asked him another question. He said, يا معاد, هل تدري حق الإباد على الله أو معاذ Do you know what is the حق of the servants upon Allah سبحانه وتعالى And معاذ he answered again الله ورسوله أعلم Allah and his messenger he knows best the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again he rode a little further to let him think, and then after that he says, "Ida fa'alu, Allah la yu'adzibuhum." If they do this, meaning la tushriku billahi shay'a, Allah will not punish them. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "The best, the best of my ummah, the best, the best of my nation, the best of my nation, meaning the cream, the cream of my nation, whom if you follow them, there is no doubt about what they understood, no doubt about what they practiced." No doubt about what they saw. No doubt about their commitment. He said, "Who are they? Karni, Karni, my generation. Thumma yalunahum, thumma yalunahum." Then he stopped. And in another riwayah, he mentioned, and after them there will come another people. A different people. Upon them, there will be some doubt. They will do some things they was not ordered to do, and some things they was ordered to do they would not do. This comes in another riwayah. But about those three generations, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the tabi'een and the atba tabi'een. Those men and women who were around, who surrounded, who supported, who followed, who listened, who obeyed, who loved, who sacrificed for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were the strangers.
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, this religion it began as a stranger. Sayyudu li gariban. Fatuba li guraba. Fatuba li guraba. Fatuba li guraba. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "This religion, this deen." In the beginning, it came as a stranger. And it will return again as a stranger. So welcome. Glad tidings to the strangers. We are the strangers. The deen was strange. Even the language was strange, although it was the language of the Arabs. But they didn't know when the Quran said, "Qad aflaha man zakkaha, wa qad khaba man dasaha." They didn't know what that meant, even though they were Arabs. How is the Quran using? How is he saying that kind of word? They were Arabs, but they never heard it like that. They knew the word zakka. But they didn't know it like that. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا طَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَهَاهَا They had not heard that before. Even Umar ibn Khattab, who was a very great poet, he didn't know what that meant. He was asking others, "What's he saying? How is he saying that? Where is he getting that?" Because the language which Allah sent to him, it was strange. Because this was kalam Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not kalam al-Nas. Kalam Allah. And when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was well known to his people, he was known Al Amin. Sadiq al Masduq sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They knew he was Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and they knew he was Al Amin, and they knew that he was truthful. But when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent him as a prophet and a messenger and commissioned him with this Quran and ordered them to follow him and to listen to this word and to give up the idols and to obey Allah and to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they thought he was saying something strange, and he said to them by their names. O oh, Quraysh, you know me. If I told you there was a army behind this mountain coming here to destroy you, would you believe me? They said, "Yes, we will believe you." Then I'm telling you that I'm the messenger of Allah, and you have the obligation to obey me. Their response was that still. He's saying something strange, and so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was respected, who was trusted, who was loved, who was known by his people, even his uncles, that day he became a stranger. And so those people who followed his message after him, one by one, they also they were known, whether they were slaves or whether they were free, 
whether they were rich or they were poor or they were black or white or Arab or non-Arab they were known everyone knew them but one by one as they chose to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they too became strangers no one was more respected in Mecca than Abu Bakr and the Siddiq after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam everyone knew him but he too became a stranger and Umar ibn al-Khattab the patriot the patriot among the Arabs among the Quraysh the man who was willing to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just because of his feeling of qawmiyah he was willing but on that day that he went to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he too became a stranger that very day and we go on to those strangers these are the people that we Muslims we strangers today we have to connect ourselves to those strangers we have to connect our children to those strangers because it is these strangers that establish this deen they are the ones who forged the path for this deen they are the ones who made the sacrifice for this deen they are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's speaking about when he says لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسأها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت and they said ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أقطعنا up to the end of the ayah these are the people whom Allah سبحانه وتعالى was speaking about and in سورة البينة these was the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna alladheena aamanu wa 'amilu s-salihaati lahum jannaatun tajri min tahtiha al-anhaar dhalika al-fawzu al-kabeer these are the people radhi Allahu anhum wa radhu an ذلك لمن خشي رب these strangers and we Muslims because we are reading the newspaper because we are educated because we are living in the west because we are Arab or Pakistani or Somali or Sudani or Algeri or Muraki because we Muslims have our own roots we have our own families our own love because we watch the television and the cinema and we go to school and our neighbors and we live in the West Australia or UK or America we develop a love a following a feeling a support for another group of people and they're not the strangers they are the strangers to the deen they are not the strangers of the deen the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are three characteristics whosoever has them has tasted 
Halawatul al Iman. Halawatul al Iman. The first is that a person loves Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mimma siwa huma. That he loves Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more than they love anyone else besides them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned to us after a special incident took place. He says, you will not find those who believe in Allah in the last day loving those who disbelieve, even if it be their fathers or their sons or their nearest of kin. So what is the asbab al nuzul of this ayah? One day, the son of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu an, he came to his father after he became a Muslim and he said to him, O oh father, I saw you on the battlefield. And I could have killed you. But because of my love and my respect for you, I could not do it. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he said to his son, Oh my son, wallahi, I never saw you. But if I had seen you, I would have killed you very easily. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because at that time you were among the kuffar, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this ayah because of the love which Abu Bakr, he showed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the difference. Today, many Muslims here, you have relatives who are selling haram, doing haram, who live in your house and don't pray. And you don't care. And you say, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Kif halik habibi. <laughs> and you drink coffee with them. And smile with them. And smoke hubbly bubbly with them. <laughs> and listen to music. And play dominoes with them. And you pass by them. And greet them as you greet anyone else. And you don't give them any nasiha. This is because you don't have the love in your heart for Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as the Prophet mentioned about this first quality of iman. Because if we love Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and someone lives in our house and, and they don't pray and they're Muslims, every single day we will argue with them. We will talk to them. Even we will be very rough with them. If they are our son, we will grab him. As the Prophet ﷺ said, when your son reaches the age of seven, make him pray. And when he's ten, if he's lazy, you beat him a little bit. Smack him up a little bit. Yes. Because that amount of admonition will bring fear of his father. So if he has fear of his father, maybe by the time he's 13, 14, 15, he will develop a fear of Allah. But if he doesn't fear Allah when he's 10, he doesn't know. And he don't fear his father either. Chances are when he's 13, 14, 15, he's big enough now if his father grab him, he will fight with his father. Because now he doesn't fear Allah more. And now he doesn't fear his father. And so what has happened to the Shabab al-Muslim? They are living with their fathers and they're selling alcohol. They're selling drugs. And their fathers are accepting the money from their sons because they can't say nothing. Because they also lost their iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu taqullah. وَالْتَنْذُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ 
And the ayah goes on. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصديا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. So he warned us, سبحانه وتعالى, fear Allah and look towards when you send forward for yourselves on tomorrow. That's your sons, that's your daughters. You sent them, and they come back. And they forgot about Allah. And you forgot about Allah. You didn't forget his name. And they did not forget his name. They know Allah. They will say Allah. And you will say Allah. But you forgot the ahkam of Allah. And they forgot the ahkam of Allah. And because they forgot the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah caused them to forget their own legacy. Their own identity. Their own deen. And so they become trash. And you know, you see the trash all over this city. Muslim trash. Muslim trash. They are Muslims. Still there is a flame of Islam inside of them. But they are sleeping, eating in the trash. And they are bringing the trash back home with them. You know who they are. And if there are some of them here today, alhamdulillah. Better for you to be here than anywhere else. And the Prophet ﷺ said to one of his companions, he says, So if you did something wrong, follow up a bad deed with a good one. That will wipe it out. And after that have good behavior. In the case of doing haram. In the case of doing kabair. You have to make tawbah. In the case of doing sagair. The small one. Then you have to do some good action like sadaqah. Fasting. So O Muslims. These strangers. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Mus'ab ibn Umair, radiyallahu anhum. Salman al-Farisi, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Bilal ibn Rabah, Abdullah ibn Umar, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Suhaib ibn Sinan, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, these are the names we should teach our children. They should be the heroes of our children. Not Michael Jordan. Not Michael Jackson. Not the football players. Or the basketball players. Or the musicians which they are listening to every day. المقداد ابن عمر سعيد ابن عامر حمزة ابن عبد المطلب عبد الله ابن مسعود حذيفة ابن اليمان أمار ابن ياسر عبيدة ابن الصامت سبحان الله If you and I took the time to read about just 50 of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ashab al-Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, tabi'in wa atbabi'in, or sahabiyat, or the Umm al-Mu'minin, just read about them, and we learned just one line or two about each one of them, and we shut the television off for two or three hours a day, and in place of that. We just play a tape about them every day. And we give to our children the best food. And we give them some money. And put it on the table. Put the money and the food or a nice gift on the table. And tell them, after you finish listening to this, take that money and eat that food. And I have some more gift. And I will give you something every day. Do that for them for about 90 days.
that money you will spend for them and that good food, that best food you will give them and that gift you will give them is an investment because now they will listen. But after 90 days, your children, mashallah, they will have a reference in their minds. But if you don't make that investment and if you have not made that investment, I will guarantee you something. Someone else has given them some gifts and someone else has offered them some food and someone else will offer them a lot of money for some other heroes. We have to make the investment in the strangers. Uthman ibn Mad'oom Zayd ibn Haritha Ja'far ibn Abi Talib Look at these people Tell your sons about Usama ibn Zayd that 16 year old boy who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said there was none better than him except his father and so he appointed him as the Amir of the Jaysh al-Muslimin. While Abu Bakr was living, and Umar was living, and Uthman was living, and Ali ibn Abi Talib was living, and other companions of the Prophet ﷺ that was twice and three times his age. But the Prophet ﷺ took that young boy and made him the commander of the Muslim army. Because he said there was none other better for that job except his father. And who was his father? Zayd ibn Harith, who had memorized the Quran directly from the Prophet. We need to tell who is Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the commander of the first Muhajirun. Those that went to Habash, the Prophet ﷺ handpicked him and sent him with those people to be their commander, their Amir. And it was Ja'far who spoke to the, to the Najashi and touched his heart. And later on it was Ja'far who convinced him to become a Muslim, the king of a country. And we know he became a Muslim because when he died and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi found out that he had died, the Prophet stood up Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he made Salatul Janazah for him. O Muslims, Khalid ibn Walid, Qais ibn Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah, Umair ibn Wahab, Abu Darda'i, Talha ibn Ubaidullah, Tell them about Abu Dhar Al Ghifari. Abu Dhar, that man the Prophet وسلم, said, Abu Dhar will walk alone, and Abu Dhar will die alone, and Abu Dhar will be raised up on the day of judgment alone. Not because he did something wrong, but because Allah distinguished him that way. Abu Dhar, who was from some of the worst of the criminals, who used to lay and wait for people on the paths in different places to rob them, who was known, and his people was known. But yet when Abu Dhar became a Muslim, he was the person, the Prophet wasallam said, the minds of the believers, he said, the believers, they are like minds of gold and silver. The best of them in the Jahiliyyah, they will become the best of them in the day of Islam, if they believe, if they believe. And look at Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar, when he became a Muslim, he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi, I go today to the Haram, and I will tell them, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah and I don't care the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said don't do that they will beat you he said I will do it and Abu Dhar he went to the Haram and he faced them and he told them by their names 
I am Abu Dhar. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Who don't like, who doesn't like it? And they jumped on him and they beat him until they knocked him out. And when he became conscious again, he stood up and he said it again to them. And they beat him and knocked him out. And he continued to do that until the Prophet ordered Abu Dhar to leave Mecca because he knew they would kill him. And Abu Dhar, he left. And the next time that Abu Dhar came back, he came back with his entire tribe. All of them saying, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Abu Dhar. And we Muslims, some of us, we are Muslims for 20 years. We're born Muslims. And we are 50 years old today. 60 years old. And we have not given one shahada where we live. We did not give one. Because we say, my family is Muslim. My father is Muslim. My grandfather Muslim, my great grandfather Muslim, MashaAllah. But you don't say to the Kafir who you work with, and you don't say to the Kafir you go to school with, and you don't say to the Kafir who enters, your non Muslim who enter your store you do business with, you don't say to your neighbor who is a non Muslim, you don't say what Abu Dhar said, you don't say, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah you don't share the treasure of Islam my brothers and sisters in Islam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the three things whosoever have them have tasted the sweetness of faith. One, Allah, a person loves Allah and His Messenger more than all else. Secondly, he loves a person only for the sake of Allah. He loves a person for the sake of Allah. Not because he is my countryman, not because he is my family, not because I know him very well, not because I hang out in the street with him. Not because we watch television together or we do business together. No, you love a person only because for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you hate the person for what? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third characteristic is that you hate going back to kufr as you would hate being driven into a fire. So when a Muslim, he thinks of the act of kufr, because here it doesn't mean to become a kafir. It means to do an act of kufr. So when the act of kufr, you, when you think of it, you think to yourself that the fire is next to you and someone is pushing you into it. Then you know you have iman. But if the idea of fawahish comes to your mind and nothing happens inside of you, you don't have it. If you lie to earn some money, the Prophet ﷺ never lied to earn some money. If you're willing to steal something from a kafir simply because he's kafir anyway, you don't have it because the Prophet ﷺ never stole from the Kafir. Because if it was legitimate for the Prophet ﷺ to steal from the Kafir, he would have took that money which he had in his house that he was holding for the Quraysh. There was people from the Quraysh who had gave the Prophet ﷺ money, trust, and even they were hating him, his message. And even though they were fighting him against his message. And even though they were killing and torturing his followers, and even though they had plotted to come to his house and kill him, not one time did they come to him and say, give me back my money. He was holding the money for them. And the reason that he left Ali ibn Talib, ibn Abi Talib in his bed, when they came, 
is so that Ali radiallahu anh, could give them the money that he was holding which belonged to them. So if it was lawful for the Prophet وسلم, to take some money from the Kafir because they were Kafirs, that was a good time to take it. But he did not because he was Al Amin. O oh, Muslims, we must be willing and courageous to be strangers. Being a stranger will result in change. People will change simply because you begin to practice, you begin to pronounce, you begin to establish yourself around them as a Muslim. You see, if you go work for some Kafirs and your name is Abdul Rabb and you tell them my name is Rabi, you open a store, your name is Harith, and you say my name is Harry. <laughs> because you want to have good relationship with them. Then one day you wake up and you tell them, no, 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 my name is not really Harry. My name is, my name is Harith. My name is, in fact, my name, full name, Muhammad al Harith. So don't call me Harry no more. No, we will call you Harry. We don't care. We, otherwise, we go to another store. You say, go to another store then. So you don't care because you wake up and you want to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to respect this deen. So there will be a change in their attitude. If you work with the non-Muslims, and because you don't really want to disturb them, you don't want to create no problems with them, you don't pray Dhuhr, you don't pray Asr, you don't pray Jum'ah, because you don't want to create no problems with them. And so they will respect you. They say, Muhammad, he's a moderate Muslim. I don't see why the rest of the Muslims are not like Muhammad. The others are extreme. They, they grow their beard long, they wear these clothes, and they got to go on a uh, Friday. And they got to be praying on the job. They're these extremists. But Muhammad, he's a good guy. He don't do that. He's very moderate. That's why we like him. So one day Muhammad, he wake up. So 12.30, everybody go for lunch. They say, Muhammad, come, we're going downstairs for lunch. Muhammad said, no, that's okay. I'm going upstairs to pray. They said, what? What's, what's going on with you, Muhammad? <laughs> and Friday comes. And Muhammad, he leaves at 11. They say, where are you going? I'm going to Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha nudi ala salati man yawmul Jum'ah fas'au ila dhikrullah. And he translated to them. If you want to fire me, you fire me. If you want me to, I work night shift, I work midnight shift, I work holidays, I work Saturday, I work Sunday, I work double shift, I work any time. But Jum'ah, Allah's time. See you. <laughs> they said, what happened to Muhammad? A couple of months later, Muhammad, he got the full beard. Now Muhammad got a lihya. I said, Muhammad, what happened to you? You looking like uh, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> you looking like these uh, Qaeda guys. What's going on with you, Muhammad? You could become extremist. Muhammad said, no, I did not become extremist, and I don't belong to any group like that. This is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Maybe they will respect Muhammad even more. But Muhammad, until he does that, he doesn't realize it. He's thinking that if he just go along with them, maybe they will like him. No, they won't. They will never be satisfied with you, Muhammad, Ahmed, anyone, until you leave your deen. And even if you leave your deen, they still will not be satisfied with you. 
they will still say to you, yeah, I know you change your religion and you this and that, but you're still a Muslim. They still will not respect you. So therefore, the only respect we should look for is the respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will lose some money. You will lose some association. You will lose some people. And even some of your family members will start telling you, why are you dressing like that? Why are you getting up early in the morning disturbing us? <laughs> yes, I, live in, I lived in Egypt and I was in a house. And I got up 4.30 in the morning. I heard the adhan. I got up and I went out. I came back. They told me, why are you, what you doing? Why are you getting up that early? I said, the masjid, I heard the adhan. They said, you can pray here. I said, no. But I understand I should go and pray in Jamaah. They said, you don't have to be extreme. I'm in Egypt. If that's the case in Egypt, then what about the Muslims here? I'm praying in Mecca. In Mecca. At a very big mosque. Masjid Malik Fahd. Big mosque. Four times this size. Across the street from the people that hold the key for the Kaaba. I forget the name of that tribe. They hold, they're the holders of the keys for the Kaaba. <coughs> and the king, when he wants to wash the Kaaba, he has to come to that person's house as a ceremony. Pick up the key, go to the Kaaba, open it. Those people who hold the key for the Kaaba, I never saw them at Fajr prayer ever. One day I saw him, the brother introduced me to him, he's washing his car. And I said to him, I'm very glad to meet you because I know your family have a big history. But I want to ask you a question. Yesterday, were you here for Fajr? He asked me, why you ask me that? Because your house is across the street from this masjid. And if you were here for Fajr, why you pray in your house and you don't come to the masjid? He told me, that's not your business. I said, probably it's not my business because you're holding a very big key. And this is what it is. We, when we become big people, we have big money, we got big name, we got big friends, we got big house, we got big family, we get also got big kibriya. And we don't have to come to the masjid then, you see. We can just stay home. No, oh Muslims, we must be willing and courageous to be a stranger because those who are in the masjid for Fajr in the morning and those who pray and leave their houses for, for Isha at night to get the benefit of the 27 Ajr, they are strangers too. We must be willing to be strangers. And when we become strangers, it's going to affect our livelihood. It will cause people to under misunderstand you. It will make you sometimes even doubt yourself. Why I lose my friends? How come my wife, she want a divorce? Because she's telling me I'm becoming extreme. Or, in the case of the sister, she doesn't cover herself. She's wearing lipstick in the street. She's putting perfume on. She's working among the kuffar. And her husband is like her. And one day, she wake up. And she puts on niqab. And she puts her full clothes on. No more lipstick. No more perfume. She doesn't talk to the men. She's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher to keep herself. She stays home and takes care of her home and her husband says, what happened to you? She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran. I read the hadith from the Prophet Wasallam, and it made me cry and to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. 
So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah. If he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. To give her someone else who is also a stranger. Because strangers belong with strangers. It will challenge your iman. It will challenge your commitment. The issue of deen came to distinguish father from son. The issue of deen came to distinguish mother from daughter. The deen came to separate individuals from the family. To separate families from the tribe and to separate the tribe from the nation on the basis of what? Deen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa al-rashideen al-mahdiyeen uddu alayhim bin nawajid Hold on to them with what? Not your front teeth, the back teeth, your molars. Belief, commitment, sacrifice, knowledge, obedience, fear of Allah, consistency, courage, steadfastness, loyalty, respect, love for each other, brotherhood, discipline, patience, support, cooperation. These are the characteristics of the strangers. If we listen to the ayats which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them, all of these ayats was calling them to these characteristics. Iman. Sacrifice. وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ Knowledge. يَرْفَئِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير obedience وما أتاكم الله أتي الله وأتي الرسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالصبر وتوا وتواسوا بالمرحمة أصبروا وصابروا والرابط الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات love for each other The Prophet وسلم, said the strangers they have love for each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in one of the hadith al Qudasi Ain al Mutahabuna bi Jalali Al Yoma Udhilluhum La Dilla illa Dilli. Who are those who love each other for my sake? This day, I will give them shade. On a day, there will be no shade except my shade. O oh, Muslim brothers and sisters, you and I, we should want to be strangers. We should want to be a part of the return of the strangers. And we should realize that no matter what the non-Muslims do, 
no matter what they try to do to blow out and extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing with their mouths, meaning their television, their cinema, their newspapers, their books, their radio, whatever they do against Islam, the lies, the distortion, the misconception, whatever they do to try to wipe out Islam, they will never wipe Islam out because Allah يُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah will perfect his light and he will perfect it through the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you and I of the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give our sons and daughters love for the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our sons and daughters who have taken off their clothes and out in the jahiliya world who are selling drugs who are in the clubs, who have went astray, we ask Allah, they will come back to become strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muslims who is in this masjid this, e this evening, the men who are here in this masjid, that they will come back to this masjid, not tomorrow evening, but in the morning for the Fajr prayer, so they can pray with the strangers. Because when the Muslims in Palestine, when the Muslims in Afghanistan, when the Muslims in Somalia, when the Muslims in Shishan, when the Muslims in Egypt, when the Muslims in Morocco, when the Muslims in Algeria, when the Muslims wherever they are, when they come out and begin to pray in the masjid as strangers, then Allah will give their earth back to them, their ird back to them, their kuwa back to them, because Islam then will be back. But you should not ask for the reward of the strangers if you're not acting like the strangers. And as long as the kuffar whom you associate with on your jobs, in your neighborhood, as long as they like you so much, you should think about it how they like you so much. O oh, Muslims, one of the most powerful things Allah gave to the strangers that made us Muslim the most powerful thing Allah gave to those strangers is the issue of da'wah. Da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I, we have the power in our mouths. We have the power in our chest. We have the power in our minds. We have more power than any other bomb in the world. Yes, the kuffar, they have the neutron bomb, they have the hydrogen bomb, they have the atom bomb, they got this bomb and that bomb, and they will blow up everything on the earth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not given them a bomb that will allow the hearts to explode. But Allah gave that bomb to us. The bomb that Allah gave to us is the D bomb. The Dawa bomb. It is the bomb that doesn't blow up any buildings. It is the bomb that doesn't break any bones. It is the bomb that doesn't harm anyone. It is the bomb that penetrates minds and hearts and causes people to explode inside and become strangers. You and I carry the bomb with us every day. But we're talking about some other bomb. We are reacting to some other bomb because we are fearing someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the izza is for him man tasha'u ya izzu man tasha'u wa yudhillu man tasha'u it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala O Muslims make dua Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come back to the deen and your respect will come back to you. Come back to the deen and all your power will come back to you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will answer you. Teach your children about the strangers and you yourself learn about the strangers.
يا الله غفور رحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذاب النار ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفرنا ذنوبنا وقينا ذاب النار ربنا آمنا فاغفرنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا الله غفور رحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين أرحمنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا الله غفور رحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته doing all the things that you and I do and at night standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time and in the day fighting the battles discharging the armies giving the ahkam and the rulings explaining the Quran instructing the people in behavior how could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time. What kind of human being could that be? And let me tell you, after Christopher Columbus came back and claimed that land for King Ferdinand and Isabella, they sent more ships. And within 150 years, they destabilized, massacred, killed, liquidated, eliminated 89 million native Indians, as they called them, to take control of what they call the new world. So we got 56 and we got 89. You keep adding for me, please. How many? 487 million that's half a billion people they never defined any of these actions any of these barbaric tragic intrusions criminal occupations destabilizations murder and protracted crimes on humanity they never called it what it's unbelievable how a concept could be forced on the world with their eyes wide open and all the lives all the time that people go to church read the Bible talk to their priests their leaders themselves around the dinner table pray to God with their eyes open or closed and don't understand the Trinity and they accept it that it's simply a mystery that cannot be explained the Islamic position regarding that is that generally generally the role of men is to protect generally to represent to protect outwardly just like you have never in history heard of an army uh, I mean a country going to war against another country and they sent a female regiment it has never happened and there's a reason for that with all the liberation that's gone on uh, America didn't send no female regiment because generally speaking answering the lady's question they are equal in front of God, but they are not the same. You see, if a little rat ran across here right now, what would you do? It was a man. <laughs> it's right, right or wrong. And they just got finished praying the morning prayer. 
So they start planning this bank robbery. <laughs> or they call up the lady, or the lady call up the man. They want to meet together. So they say, where should we meet? Oh, well, let's meet after lunch. Well, lunch time is door time, not prayer time. <laughs> so, but she said, well, before we go have this, this little meeting that we're going to have, let's pray door first. Pray that. <laughs> so, okay, we pray. So then we had a meeting together. So where are we going from here? Well, we should go to your house or my house. Well, we got to pray. We got to pray that afternoon prayer now. <laughs> so we pray the afternoon prayer. So where are we going? We meet at your house. So we, what we gonna do? We take a little drink and we start getting smooching or whatever. So, oh, well, it's, it's a it's a sunset prayer. <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. So the whole issue of the prayer, the prophet, the, the Quran says, in the salata tanha and fashia wal munkar. Is this correct? Verily, the prayer is a preventive deterrent against human tendencies towards doing what's wrong. And one day she wake up and she puts on niqab and she puts her full clothes on, no more lipstick, no more perfume. She doesn't talk to the men, she's not working anymore because she understands to keep her haya, to keep herself. She stays home and takes care of her home and her husband says, what happened to you? She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran, I read the hadith from the Prophet and it made me cry to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah. If he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. The Muslim neighbor, the Muslim co-worker, the Muslim colleague, they are the ones that are blocking the way for people understanding Islam because people are getting confused they are confusing Muslims with Islam and part of us uncovering the treasure sometimes means moving Muslims out of the way now that the, the treasure is open and plain and clear and uncovered for anyone to see I ask, are there any non-Muslims here tonight that would like to inherit this treasure? La ilaha illallah. One Islam Productions, an Islamic film studio established in Australia, is dedicated to producing films for all Muslims. Just some of the films by One Islam Productions. Children's programs, Islam for Me, We Remember Allah, Storytime and more. Educational films, Pray As You Have Seen Me Pray, Words, Ramadan, Renewal of Faith. Documentaries. We at One Islam Productions believe that Islam is precious and deserves to be presented in only the highest quality. Visit us at www.oneislam.net for more information. One Islam Productions, a film production company run by Muslims for Muslims.